Hey class, it's Billberry with the week five demos. We're going to look at some cool stuff this week, including inputting data from a file, creating arrays of objects, and using data out of those. We're going to take a little side look at Java Docs, because it's going to be important in this particular project. And we will also take a little side look into the debugger and how the debugger can be used to dive in to objects. So let's look at what we're going to cover. The demo is going to be that of a customer array. So we're going to read data from a text file and we're going to create a bunch of customer objects out of the data we find there and then we're going to store all of that in an array. Now one of the interesting little um, detours that we're going to take is we have a project in which we are the customer for, we are the client for, a customer class but we have not been given any source code for it. So it's fairly typical that you're going to get things in sort of library format where you get the byte code, you get the compiled version, but you're not given the source code and frankly you're not supposed to have it. You don't need it, you're not supposed to change it. If you're not supposed to change it there's no point looking at it. So we are given a little less than we may normally see and we have to learn to deal with that. And then we're also, as I said, going to use the debugger to do a little bit of a deep dive and see how it can help us when it comes to objects and arrays and things like that. So that's kind of cool. So uh, how are we going to start this process? Well, let's start with a BlueJ project uh, that we are given. And this is going to be the customer array project. It doesn't have much in it. Notice that the .java file is not provided in this project. I don't have source code. And in fact, the object or class browser here tells me, in fact, that's the case. I have no source code. Uh, but I have created a little main program for you, and it has virtually nothing in it. So we are starting with less than we normally have. So where do we go from here? Uh, well, let's start writing some pseudocode, and then we'll start fleshing it out with what we want to do. First thing I want to do is to read the data from the file. All right, so we can do that even without creating the objects. And then we're going to create the objects and store them. Uh, we're then going to prove that we have access to the objects. All right, we're going to prove to ourselves that we can do that. So certainly we can do that, and that seems like a reasonable uh, start. So let's start by reading data from a file. What does it take to make that happen? And uh, that's, that's a pretty straightforward thing, it turns out. Um, but there's some new things that we've got to learn. So let's look at the file in question. Uh, the file, if we look at our little folder here, we have the customer class. We have class data, but not the Java file. We have main. Everything else looks all right. And then there's this file called customers.txt. And customers.txt looks like this. First of all, it has a useful little counter at the top that says, hey, you're going to have five objects here. You're going to see why that's useful with an array, but it's it's uh, very good to know ahead of time how many. In fact, you have to know when you're creating the array, a pure array in a language like Java or C, you have to know how many objects objects you're going to have in the array, or else you've got to do some kind of uh, gymnastics to make it work, and we're not going to do that. So we have a count that says, hey, you got five customers in this thing. Then for each customer, we have a balance and an age and a name, just so we have different data types to work with. And we need to read all of these things in. Notice these are tokenized. There is white space between them. We don't really care what kind of white space. The, the uh, tokenization means as long as there's some white space, then this is going to work. And uh, we have tabs or we have spaces or whatever, but they are separated and they are one per line. But it doesn't actually matter, right? This whole thing that we're going to look at with tokenization organization. It could be one piece of data per line, or it could be every customer on one line as long as there's white space between, and it wouldn't make any difference to our method, our approach. It's just easier for the humans to read it if it's something like this. So that's what the file looks like, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Now how do we do that? What's the method here that we're going to use? Well, the thing that we're going to use, as your chapter has introduced, is we're going to use the scanner. We've used scanners before, but we have used them to get data from a user. Remember that scanner is a very uh, wide-reaching type of object. You can use it to read stuff from the user, yes, but also from a file. Also, you can use it to parse out data from a string, which is kind of a different kind of use. But in this case, we're going to use it on a file. So what we need to do is we first need to create a file object. So I'm going to say, what type of thing is it? It's a file. I'm going to call it input file, I in file. And then, as with most kinds of objects, we say new. And then we say, I'm going to make a new file. And I'm simply going to pass it the name of the file customers.txt. 
and that is going to create that. Now, it won't compile because it's going to say, what is this file thing of which you speak? And of course, that means we need an import, so I'm going to go grab java.io. And I could probably do file. Let's see if that's going to be enough, and it seems like it is. Uh, you could uh, do io.star if you want to be a little more broad reaching and bring in things too. That's another option. So now we have created a new file object. The file object itself is not going to be too useful to us. Now, remember my general method is I'm going to at the end always have a close stuff down, right? So typically I would at this point, if I have opened the file, which I have not completely opened the file, right? I haven't actually done anything that looked like an open. But the interesting thing we're going to see here is there is no file close object. So even if we look at this and say I've opened the file and sort of prepped the way here, uh, there is no file close, which is very strange. But we'll talk about how we're going to fix that in a little while. So I have made a new file object and associated it with the file name. So now the file is going to be ready for some operations that we're going to do even though I can't close it, we're going to solve that problem later. Okay, the next thing that I need to do is I need to set up a scanner and associate it with that file so the scanner knows where it's going to get its data from. So I'm going to create a new scanner and I'm going to call it in scan, right? Input scan from the file. And I'm going to create, as with all objects, a new scanner, but where we used a different thing before, where we used system.in, now we're going to actually point it to the file. Right? This wants as its parameter a file object, which we created up here. So, of course, this will also not compile because it says, I've never heard of a scanner before. Well, okay, Java util.scanner. And that's going to make that happy. Ah, okay. So, it's going to make it happy with that part, but there's another part that needs to be uh, handled here. Now, this is an interesting kind of uh, a strange thing that we haven't seen before, but this is saying, look, we know that if you're using, if you're doing file operations, like a scanner is about to do, right? A scanner is going to do file operations. It is exceedingly likely that this might have a file not found exception. And we need you to be explicit about the fact that you might throw that, right? That this function might actually throw that file not found exception. And it demands that you actually make that explicit. So where you have to put that up here is after the definition of the function, the method, you then come up and you say throws file not found exception. Right? That is a note to the outside world and by the way there's going to be a Java docs notation that we would now want to put here. Normally we don't think about documenting main really well but uh, we, we now will want to think about that right? because it throws an exception and we'll talk about that uh, how we can add that a little bit later if I remember. Okay so now it's going to be happy and it's going to say well I haven't found a file not as well so we can keep doing that stuff or we can just say look okay I give up just bring in the whole I.O. thing and then I won't have to do any more onesies twosies on file stuff which is fine and now it compiles just fine and now it's happy. Does that make sense? So think about that look at my imports look at these two lines of code and you should see that that sort of makes sense and then the throws uh, command that we have up here. All right. Now, while I'm thinking about it, uh, the there is a Java Docs command, and just to to show you the typical stuff that we put in a Java Docs, right? That we start here is we put these kinds of things: parameters and returns, right? So I'm going to just copy this. It's easy to insert a new function. It's easiest to insert a new function, right? To do this, so. Uh, I'm going to grab that out and I'm going to just put this stuff right here and we're going to see, oops, I actually wanted more of that, but uh, that's okay. Uh, so what else might we put here? Right, so do we have parameters? Yes, we do have the parameters, which is args, which is an array. Let me just type that in for us real quick. Okay, so I've put in the typical little header now where I describe the thing and I also give it the parameters, right? There's one other thing that we can add here. We don't have a return, so we don't add that, but here is another good one that we put in, and then we say throws file not found exception. 
right? We're going to see in a little while why Java docs are so important, and this would be an example of one of the few things that we tend to put at the beginning of a function declaration, right? A method, when you declare a method, you put in a description for it, you put in a list of parameters, a list of what's returned, and then here's one that we haven't used before, and that is throws. And that's to let people know, hey, when you're using this thing, it may well throw that exception. So if you're calling this function, you want to know about that because you might want to catch it. Of course, main, you're not really calling from elsewhere, but you get the idea. Okay, so now, how do we go prove that we can uh, read these things in, right? We just want to read them in, and we want to prove that we, uh, that we have the right stuff. So let's now, uh, let's read the count, right? Let's start by reading the count, and in fact, this isn't going to be read data. This is going to be something like uh, prepare to read the file. And let's read in the count. So we're going to create a variable called customer count, and we're going to set it equal to. Now, how do we get stuff in from the file? Well, we're going to use the scanner, right? And then we're going to use the very typical methods that we have used before. So we can use next int, next double, next, next line, right? We can use all of those things just as we did before. So we can use next int. Right, because the count, if we look at that, the count is in fact at the top and it's an integer, so that should be fine. All right. Now, one of the things that's interesting, remember I talked about closing stuff down? Uh, one of the things that's interesting here is while the file doesn't have a close method, the scanner does have a close method. We have been oblivious to the fact all along here that Java is doing the cleanup for us. In some other languages, in old style C for instance, when you create new objects in memory, you must dispose of those things. So you have to be really careful. <clears throat> you create an array, you have to destroy it. You create objects, you need to destroy them. Java is doing all of this stuff as if by magic, but um, one of the things that we can do is say, hey, we're done with the scanner now, so uh, you know, once, once we're not using the file, because the scanner was the only thing that was using the file, once we're done with that, then it lets Java's garbage collector know, hey, it's probably okay to just delete this file reference now, right? this file object. Anyway, so that's, a, that's just good hygiene here. Now, I can read in the count, and so for the moment, I could certainly put in a print line, but you know, hey, we've got a debugger here. Right, so let's just use the debugger to see whether that works. And I'm going to compile it and make sure that works, and then I'm going to come out here to the line break, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to now come to uh, right. I'm going to come to here, and I'm going to run main. And notice, by the way, it's got some other stuff about the throws. We'll talk about that stuff more later. Okay, so we now are to the point where it's about to run this line, and I'm going to say step, and now I should have in a customer count, and it is equal to 5. Yay. Okay, so that's excellent, and that seems to be fine. I'm going to let it continue. So rather than putting a print, let's be smart and use the debugger. Okay, so we can take off that breakpoint now. So we've got the count. Now let's prove to ourselves, uh, we won't necessarily create the objects, but let's prove that we can actually go and read all the objects, right? So let's say, uh, how do we do this now? Well, we know we need a for loop, right? So because we have so many objects and we know how to count them, so I'm going to say for cust, uh, int cust equals zero, and then cust less than, cust count, right? That makes sense. And cust plus plus, right? So I'm going to start and go through. Notice I'm not using I. I can think of better things to describe the context than I. Uh, so I'm going to use an actual variable that says, hey, that's I'm counting customers here. So we really are. Now we need to go get in the data. So what is the order of the data that we need to get? Well, I need to get a double representing the balance, then an integer, and then I have the name to deal with. Okay, so let's deal with that. So, easy enough to say, I'm going to create a double called balance, and I'm going to uh, fill it by taking the scanner, and I'm going to say I want the next double. And I'm going to say, I'll create an integer called age, and I'm going to say in scan dot next int. All right? And then I'm going to say int, uh, let's, or I'm not int, I'm going to say string name equals in scan dot next. I just want to get the next token. 
Okay, and then I'm going to, I could go and print those all out, or again, I can use the debugger to see whether I'm successfully grabbing all of that stuff in. Make sure it compiles. Yes, indeed it does. Let's set a breakpoint here. Uh, in fact, maybe not the here, maybe even here. That's good. We'll compile it, we'll run it, and we'll see what we've got. Okay, let's see, we've got our debugger, that's great. And let's see where we are in here. We're about to execute the uh, scan for the name. I will step into that, or step step over that. Actually, just step, plain old step. Now let's see what we've got. Okay, we've got customer count is five. What other local variables do we have? Well, we have our name, our customer count is five, int, Okay, well, we stepped and so we've already actually passed that point, so I'm going to have to go and try that again. So let's do that. Okay, so let's set the breakpoint here. Where can we do this? Uh, yeah, actually that's... Uh, uh, what's a better way to do that? Okay, for the moment I'll just do something stupid like put a variable here. That kind of defeats the purpose of doing what I want to do, but uh, it'll work. Okay, so now let's go run the thing and let's use the debugger to see what's going on here. Okay, we're on that line. Great. And here's the debugger and what do we have? Let's step one more time and now we should be able to see. Uh, good. So we have the balance. That looks right. We've got the age and we've got the name. Wait a minute. We just got Johnny here, right? We didn't get the whole rest of the name. Well, remember, that's tokenized, right? We're using the scanner. It's looking for tokens. There's a space here. So we've got Johnny and then we've got the rest of this thing. So one of the things we have to do a little differently for strings is we have to think about um, how, how exactly that works with the tokenization world. Now, there's two things that I can do potentially. One thing is I could just try to do next line at this point, right? Just say I want to do the next line all the way up to the carriage return. But the problem is you actually do need to skip the spaces that are ahead of Johnny. And depending on the kinds of white space, you're going to get extra junk in there. So one of the things I need to do is not do next line. I really need to do next so that I can get the name Johnny. But then I'm going to concatenate on everything up to the next line break. So this may seem a little odd, but this is going to uh, going to work. And in fact, I need to just terminate here, and I'm going to leave in my stupid thing. Uh, one, right? And so now let's go put a breakpoint here. Let's compile it, and let's go put a breakpoint, and let's run it, and let's make sure we can get the names. Okay, so run that. Great. And here we are. Here's the debugger. And at this point, I do in fact have the name, the whole Johnny Quest Adams. Now, let's see what happens. Let me continue till the next breakpoint. The next customer, I'm on customer one now. Uh, you know, zero was the first one, the second one is one. The balance is here, the age is here, and in fact, it looks like we have the name. So if we continue, we can see that it's doing everything we need to do. It's getting five and then we're done. So in this case, the debugger really helped us. It, we didn't have to go put a bunch of print statements, even though I had to do this because of the stupid stepping, but you know, you get the idea. So now we've proved that the thing works in terms of getting in all the customers from the file. We've successfully read the count and all of the data, and we know we have it in hand, and now we just need to be smarter about where we put it and how to store it. The video is getting long, so I'm going to stop there, but that covers basic stuff about file input, and hopefully that's useful to you, and we'll come back and continue this in the next video. Thanks for watching.